in time You showed up and passed me up like you do every time I get amnesia I'm thinking that you keep coming around speakers today, that's true, yeah, well, we'll read the announcements once they're up there, um, how about praise reports, anybody got any praise reports today, I do. what is it Matthew, so, can yeah, I can hear you, let it rip, okay, you're out, so, Mr. Tavener. Just 
uh, started a new, kind of completely different position in my work. And just thankful God's been kind of helping me out with that. I'm very, very thankful. For it. yeah, it's going to get a bit stressful, but I know God will be with me. So thank right you. on. So there's a prayer requested in there as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Go for it. All right. This is Circle. Um, I want to let you. Y'all know that my brother-in-law, Steve, was doing a lot better. I went to visit him, my sister, Monday. He's home. Good. And um, they, they're, you know, he seems to be doing pretty good. So good. I know it's power Excellent. of prayer. And my sister seems to be at peace about everything. And, and I know it's the Lord because I told her just take a day at a time, you know, and don't look at the whole picture. So, yeah. right on. All right. Praise the Lord for that. All right. Oh, there's a hand, Mrs. Cannon. You well, got a hand for the praise reports? There was, we prayed on Crystal Sunday, and I don't know all the details about it. I just got some good news through Jamie today. Can you tell him, Jamie? Uh, her first surgery went good. Coming up, brief report and prayer request. Both that big Kevin Snyder surgery was today. They found a break in his pelvis, that's why he couldn't oh. get walking. Oh. So they took him to Miami Valley, operated on his pelvis, and put a new hip in. Oh, wow! And they Can said it was a mess, but he's going to be okay. They got he just have a new hip put in like yeah. recently. He, did. he had a new hip put in, but that car wreck knocked it right. out and broke his pelvis. They didn't realize that until a day or two ago, but he couldn't walk, couldn't walk, couldn't walk. So today they fixed it all. They replaced the same replacement hip. Gotcha. Wow. They're crazy. Okay, the we're still replacement hip with a replacement. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, we're still praising the Lord for the Schneiders being okay. That was terrific. And, yep. Uh, I still keep thinking. About the yes, that was that was a big wreck. Praise the Lord that you guys are okay. You guys feeling good with the? It's coming. Thank you. Good. I wasn't. There's no mental problems yeah, there. Just the confession. Yeah, there. Is. <laughs> 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 but that was your verbal. Jennifer Michaels was in August, right? She got home Friday. They had to put a rod in her leg, and uh, but she's sitting outside today. We went by. Thank so you. She's. Good. Yeah, she's doing good. She's young. She's she's uh, doing good. From they put it, but they have put it in. Yeah. Rod. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm just happy to be here. All right. How about that? I'm happy to be here too. There's two of us. There's some clappers. There's a lot of people happy to be here. I love church, man. Jane, Jane, Jane church. Jane Crane is here. Yeah. Jane Crane. Jane Crane. Jane Crane. Jane Crane. That's right. We love church. That's right. That's good. Is Steve Come on happy? Up. Is Steve be happy? He's happy. He's happy. Yeah, thumbs up. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Are we going to praise? We're going to praise. Well, one more praise. Um, a guy I work with, his 83 year old dad, got sideswiped by a car today on a bicycle. He ended up with just an injured shoulder and he was home in a couple hours. 83 year old man riding a bicycle. My mom's 81. She's a bicycler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, how about prayer requests? Yeah. Um, Pastor Bellini's wife, Mrs. Maria, posted on Facebook today that the Taliban had captured something like 300 missionaries and their families, and they're going to be heading them all tomorrow morning. Oh. He said they're going to be heading them all morning. Children, men, women, children, that they needed urgent prayers. Yeah. You guys hear that? Um, we, yeah, we need to pray for our missionaries over there. Um, yeah. You, you guys know my son. He, he's uh, uh, the go director up there at Gateway Church in Finley, and he's got. And a, hey, hey, hey! What's a go director? 
that's, that's what they just call their, their local outreach mission guy. It's, it's a big church, you know how they come up with names for things, right? But uh, anyway, um, it's not somebody that, it, their church gives some partial uh, support to this person, but it's not their missionary necessarily, but uh, they got word over there, hey, are you, are you getting out, how's it going? And they said, we're not going anywhere. This is where God's got us, so. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of missionaries there that in prayer. That's you guys, you guys all heard that what she said. Okay. Um, Kevin Snyder had surgery today on his hip. They replaced all the parts again and repaired a fracture. So just prayers for him to recover quickly. This was last week was his 12th week. He was about to be released from the doctor, so he's starting the whole process over again. Okay, so. We definitely need to pray for Kevin Schneider because he just came in. That's twice he was mentioned here tonight, no. right? So he got that to me. That means right. yeah. we got to pray. pray for okay. Oh, yeah, Mr. Tavern. Um, we've been watching my wife's brother's dogs for the last couple of years, and they're both pretty old. Uh, the older of the two, we thought she had a stroke. We took her to the vet. It turns out she didn't have a stroke, but some other weird brain issue, and she's not eating. So basically, the next 48 to 72 hours, she's either going to recover and pull through or to his second COVID vaccine, but he's not been well since he got it, and he he never misses work. He took half a day yesterday, and he's been home today, and that's why he didn't come tonight. Um, he's real congested, the whole thing. Um, he sounds horrible. And so that, and then also um, the people in Haiti, and then um, my one daughter that is kind of estranged from me, I just heard was spent the night in jail so she right. definitely needs prayer. I'm like Denise, my family that is lost, and I've had those dreams of us going when Jesus comes to get us and me turning around and looking and seeing mine and saying, I can't leave them because I know what they can go through. All right. Okay. Oh, Mr. Zerba. Cheryl. Yeah, I heard from Lindsay Reinhardt. Her baby's in the hospital. Okay. Oh, she over yeah. in the hospital. Good, uh, respiratory problems. Really? Okay. All right. There's a new baby there, the Reinhardt baby, has some respiratory problems. Well, actually, the whole Reinhardt family is sick, so they need a lot of prayer. Thankfully, that um, Nate Snyder, he was sick from Texas. But um, Quick Veronica, her surgery is Friday, and um, I visited her last night for a little bit, so she. She needs prayer for anxiety. She has a lot of people to take care of, and that's what she's mainly worried about, her boys. So definitely be praying for her. And right now she just wants peace and prayer for anxiety. Right. I think some ladies going over there tonight after church to pray over Veronica. So that's good. I'm supposed to get on that. Okay, are we good for the prayer requests? All right. Oh, Matthew, you got a prayer request? Um, I guess we can pray for my mom issues, for her worry sickness, and all that stuff. Looks like that would be a good prayer request. Pray for my mom's issues and problems. Issues and, issues and problems, gotcha. And Matthew's mom. Sister, Try to be good. She come to Jesus, okay. Very good. 
Oh, yeah, Mrs. Gannon. One more, real quick. We continue to pray for Jerry's Jordan. He's he, he's come away getting better, but he's got a long road of recovery with his rehabilitation and everything. You say Jer Jerry? Me. This no, is my I'm sister not. Jerry. Our sister Jerry. Sorry, yes. Her son Jerry that was in Jordan. that accident. Okay, yes. all right, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, let's go to the Lord. Lord God. First of all, we praise you. We praise you that we can meet together like this. We give you all the glory and the credit for the praise reports that we heard here tonight. We praise you for healing. We praise you for lives being restored and, and saved in horrific accidents. We praise you for the way you're calling some families, Lord God. And in that, Lord God, we pray that your call is heard. We pray that family members get the opportunity and that you speak through them when it comes time to speak to family members that they know are being called in some difficult situations. Lord God, move in that stuff, Lord God. Let our brothers and sisters be moved there, Lord God. Lord God, we think about the, the world scene, what's going on there in Afghanistan, and, and uh, we have brothers and sisters there. We, we know that the entire country is so many lost souls, Lord God. We, we just want to commit our missionaries to you, Lord God. Protect them. They're, they're being used by you, Lord God. They're doing your work. They're doing kingdom work. They're doing eternal stuff, Lord God. The only stuff that lasts for eternity, the only stuff that matters. And we, we just pray that you save them. Work in that. Work miraculously in that, Lord God. We'll give you the glory and the credit and the honor, Lord God, either way. But have your hand on our missionaries that are there. Don't let any harm come on them. Let nothing that, let, 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 let Satan not be able to touch them, Lord God. Please, Lord. God's got everything. He's got, he's got everything. So just rest in Him. Breathe in Him. Think on Him. You're in His house.
thank you, Lord, that we have a place that we can come. And, and Lord, you're a refuge, even when we're out in the middle of nowhere. But there's just something about gathering together with people of like mind, with people who love you, Lord. We thank you that you give us a refuge right here and right now.
not been a good day for me. And you get that call from a family member and it's, it's devastating. And this gets out hard and then you turn on the radio and you hear what's going on and, and God's people are being persecuted. And you know it says in God's word, blessed are those whose name is reviled for my name. So they're blessed, the Lord is it's such a dichotomy. How can they be blessed when their lives are aligned? Do you know that's just part of God's, the mystery of God, and also the evidence of God. You know, it's, it's the evidence of God's goodness because for one thing, it's bad. It's really bad. But you know what? We shouldn't be surprised because he told us it was going to happen. So it's just one step closer to seeing Jesus. It's one step closer to him. And it is the evidence of the goodness of God. Amen, amen. All throughout my history, faithfulness is walked beside me. Oh, 
us, Lord. Yes. You save and you comfort and you protect. So, Lord, I just ask to be with us tonight. Holy Spirit, rest on us. Yes. Father, I just pray that you just be with Pastor Mark. Give him a word. Give him a word that gives us life, that we can go out into the world and be the light that you call us to be. Lord, speak to us, Father. Speak to us, Lord. And we will praise you all the days of our life. We worship you. We love you. In the name of Christ, our Lord, we pray. September is the goal. End of September, go back. And you work for? 
You're going to tell us. You're gonna send tell international. So, yeah, yeah. And you're going to tell us all that, Mr. Right, well. So I'm going to get out of the way. But uh, Ukraine was what when it was the Soviet Union? Was what country? Was it Yugoslavia? No, it was known as Ukraine. It was always been Yugoslavia. Uh, it uh, was known as the Red Basket of the former Soviet Union, so it's a very fertile area. And so you basically pop a seed and it'll grow, so that's how it works. <laughs> all right. And so all you farmers would be jealous because the topsoil is about 15 inches deep. So. Black, black wow. soil. Black topsoil. Black yes. topsoil is 15 inches deep. We like wow. it. Right? There we go. Okay. Let's Let's just all right. So, We're gonna, let me do this, too. Okay. We haven't charged our little clicker until just before service ah uh, so we're going to hope that it works if it doesn't work she's going to have to ask for the advanced slides in the back so okay. that's our fault not her fault okay in case we have that trouble oh it did work did it work it did okay good okay so uh, i have been in ukraine now and november will be 22 years so time flies very quickly um and i have thoroughly enjoyed my time there and just thoroughly enjoy being in Ukraine. It is my second home away from home. And so currently I work in missions mobilization, which means I help Ukrainians who want to go to other parts of the world to go there as missionaries. So um, that's what we do. We seek people out. We have conferences and things like that. But let me tell you a little bit more. So um, in November of about missions so it's not so abnormal that it's kind of just part of everyday life so I did a lot of research trying to figure out what it looked like and all those other things so it finally happened uh, came up with a name and everything so it's called impacting the world because it had to work in English it had to work in Russian and Ukrainian so most people don't have that problem when they're starting a new business but I did so <laughs> but at any rate it it was a great, it's been a great opportunity. So I've just seen God answer prayer every step of the way. And so I'm just really excited that he's continuing to grow the ministry. Okay, where's that button at? Well, there we go. So a large part of my work is I do seminars at missions conferences and at children's workers conferences, helping them to understand things that children can do uh, for missions and things that they're they are capable and how they can encourage children in their Sunday school classes to think more about serving God in other places or giving money to um, missionaries and the, things like that. Oops, went the wrong way. It goes off. We okay. Didn't, we didn't do training on that, did we? Uh-uh. Yeah. We didn't. Okay. All right. So um, a large part of my responsibility is writing a curriculum that uh, deals with learning about cultures, different cultures. And so, so far I have the Chinese culture and the Zambian culture finished. Um, I have those finished because there are uh, missionary stories that take place in those countries. And so the idea for the curriculum is that the children are involved in activities that help them learn about the culture, what foods they eat, how they dress, what games they play, you know, how they, what they do in school, and all those things that are kind of normal to life, but that are sometimes, sometimes they're very different. Um, so that's just how, how they learn about culture. And so according, uh, going, Coordinating with this are stories, and so you tell a story about the country, and the kids learn about the things that happen in the country. Wrong way, right? Okay. All right, so uh, one of those things that I wanted to do was um, encourage children to give. I started going to Sunday school at age three and started giving in Sunday school, and so that's been, that's left me with a lifelong habit of what do I do with my money? Of course, I give it to God. And so uh, the younger you start, the easier it is. Uh, when you're 18 and try to pry that out of their fingers, it won't come out so easy. So, um, but I went to a printer and I said, okay, I wanna print a bank box. This is my idea. 
tell me what I need to do. So I had all the instructions, handed it back to them, and so it came out looking pretty nice. And so I ordered 1,200 of them, and I have about 110 left in three and a half years, and so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and it's working. Kids are s collecting money, bringing it to their Sunday school director. Here, here's a box. So each box will hold about 125 US dollars when it gets all counted. So that's kind of exciting. So, oops. Mm. All right. So um, another thing that I wanted to do was create stickers. Um, I feel God's given me a gift of creativity, and I get to use it in, in this ministry, and it's just been a blessing. And so uh, creating stickers to help give to children, to encourage them to think about missions. And so um, that's, those are 18 stickers of what I have created so far. And then, oops, sorry for the reruns. Uh, and then... Last summer, I wanted these little round stickers. So each of them have a command, like go, send, teach, love, share, give, seek, and pray. Now, in Russian and in Ukrainian, those words are like five times as long. So, you know, so like uh, the word for love in English, it's lubit and lubitya in so it's the same word basically, but different spelling in Russian and Ukrainian. So, you know, there. So these are um, how I see them being used in ministry in the future is being used as part of a um, passport that will give the kids when they're part of the program, and then these are stickers that will go in that passport. And then I did a few in English as well, so I had to do a few more. Um, then I created a website. Well, I didn't create. I handed off the information. Somebody else created it. Uh, any anyway, rate, but it took a couple days to get this up there. And so this is for Sunday school teachers and parents to go as a resource, a place to go and to play, a place to find things. The site is written in Russian. It's translated to English and Ukrainian. So you're welcome to go look. Uh, it's not going to read perfect English because it's not meant to read perfect English. So, www.impactingtheworld, right? Yep, .com, yep. Okay. <laughs> all, the time, all right. Well, let's see. Okay. Go. So then on another, there's a resource page on here where you can go to find information and books about recipes, about other things, about skits. Uh, and so these are just resources that are available and that um, can be used. So um, the basis of my seminar is what can children do? Children can pray. Uh, it, doesn't take any, it doesn't take any money resources to pray. So they can pray. They can uh, ask God for things in their own life, in the lives of other children, in the lives of the children at their school and praying for missionary children and praying for those uh, that are in other countries who don't have a church. They can also give, and so I ta talk about how they can give, how they need to give cheerfully because that's what God expects of us. And so, and also challenging them to find a little job to do. In Ukraine, they can get money for recycling materials, so they can go collect the recyclables and hand them in and get cash. It works kind of nice. So, you know, that's something they can do to help get money and not always just ask for a handout. So at the, give them a work ethic as well. They can testify. They can tell what God's doing as God answers their prayer. They can see God is alive and real, and we want, him, want them to share what God is doing in their lives because that only empowers them to pray more and want to see God working and answering. Uh, they can serve. Uh, they can serve in their, with their church. They can serve in their families, serving people, uh, sharing Christ, sharing the love of Christ. And so that can take and form many different ways. Um, one youth group in Ukraine decided they were going to bless a village a few years ago. So these were older, so they were older than 14. But they went to this village. They camped out in the village. And then during the day, they went and did projects. 
So the first day they were out, they saw this lady. She had a shovel in one hand and a cane in the other hand. And she was busy digging this little hole. And they're like, oh, let us help you. She's like, Meh, yeah, how much money you want? And they're like, we don't want any money. We're just here to help you that day. So they were able to bless her. They dug the hole that she was trying to dig. They fixed her roof. They just, and she was just over in shock. You know, she was overwhelmed with what they had done. And so those types of things just share the love of Christ with people in the community. Okay. Uh, ministry that I'm involved in is called Missions Mobilization Ministry, and we technically call it, we call it 3M, but it has nothing to do with paper products or anything like that. So that's just how it goes. Um, but building awareness, we use a program out of the Philippines called Kairos International. If you're um, aware of Perspectives course, so Perspectives is kind of like the master's level. The Kairos course is kind of like the bachelor level of this into that people are learning um, what missions is about and what God has done, that God has blessed them to be a blessing. And so we need to share what God has given with us to him and all about him. Uh, we assist ministry partners. We have Ukrainians who are in the field already. Um, they go for six to nine months at a time, so they're collecting finances for that uh, amount of time. At the first trip, we offer to pay 50%, and so they have to find the other 50% from the other Ukrainian families and friends and churches that are in the area. And so each time they come home and then return to the field, they get 10% less. So they have to find 10% more from Ukrainians. And so we want them to not be dependent on Western money, and we want them to be dependent first on the Lord, but just to see how um, he helps them in that endeavor. We publish books because Ukrainians have a 95% literacy rate that they love to read. So if you hand them a little pamphlet, they go, Phoop. It's nothing, and they won't read it. But you, have, you hand them a book, they'll, they'll read it. They'll take it. So um, we do conferences, too. And so in that, we have missions conferences. Um, this year's looked a little different because we did it via Zoom. So we had smaller groups meeting together, and then the plenary uh, time when the main speaker came to speak, they all listened to the same speaker through a Zoom, and then they talked about it, prayed about it. I thought it was effective. It wasn't quite what other missions conferences had looked like, but you know, it's different and it was good. So we're good, glad for that. And then um, involved in children's ministry, which is mostly where I come in and helping children to gain that perspective of missions. Where am I pointing this at? I don't know. Okay. So, uh, God has answered some great prayers, and so my personal monthly needs at this moment in time is $315 a month. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, it all happened in about six days. So, those kind of things still overwhelm me, because I'm like, it's not about me. I already got that part. And so, I'm just really excited, and so my plan is to return at the end of September, and so um, that's the goal. And so by the, between now and then, we'll just see how God provides and uses the, this time while I'm here. Uh, project funds, I am still about $8,500. And that's just to help me with my expenses while I've been uh, on home service. I have traveled over 10,000 miles for, since uh, April 1st. So yeah, my, my car, it needed some miles on it, so I helped it out. But, um, and before I came home, I'm like, man, I just would love to drive. I'm, I'm over that now. I, <laughs> I don't have to drive anymore. So, so yeah. And so, um, you know, believe it or not, I still am in language study because it takes a lot to learn Russian. They have seven cases and I can't hardly even explain it to you myself, but it's hard because it, I have to think okay, am I talking to someone, from someone, for someone, and it all has a different ending. So, you know, it's just, it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of work. Um, and then with uh, the missions mobilization ministry, 
just fun so we can help to get the word out and help people to uh, desire to become missionaries. Excited, I mean, God's using Ukrainians in Uganda like crazy. Um, it's, it's exciting. So many, many Ukrainians know English and they can go to Uganda and, and speak in English and be okay there. So um, we have others in Tajikistan and Turkmenistan, um, Nepal. And so one of my highlights in this last term was being able to do a children's missions conference in 2018. We had 285 kids who came to learn about missions. It was exciting. And so at the end of the conference, we had um, three kids who came forward because they wanted prayer. The one boy, the boy wanted, uh, he said, I just need more Jesus in my life. And I'm like, I don't doubt that one bit. So he was pretty active the whole day, just kind of running around. I'm like, okay, slow down, slow down. But uh, the, the girl, one of the girls wanted prayer because she really wanted to share Christ with her friends at school. And that's exciting. So part of the program, we gave them the wordless bracelet and he helping them to learn how to share the gospel. And then... Um, the oldest girl, she was 14, and her desire was to be a missionary in North Korea. Well, at age 14, Russia and Ukraine were also communist, okay? When I was 14, they were communist. Okay, who knows what God's going to do? <laughs> so, so I'm excited to see um, what God has in the future and where we're going. And so this is just a little bit about what I've done and... If you have questions, I'd be, I'll try to answer. I don't, can't promise anything, so. So. Have any questions? No? You're like that. We, we have some folks at a church in Louisville that train missionaries to do missions work. Sure. A YWAM organization, you know, mm -hmm. so it's pretty exciting to know that we got people that are training people to be missionaries, right? Isn't that exciting? Not just doing missions work, but they're training people to do to do that. So, Jane, we love you. We appreciate you. Need to pray for you here while we got you in the front. Um, and uh, excited about what you told us tonight. It was good. Does anybody have a question for her? You? She'll be around. You have some literature out there on the table and. And probably run out there after church and answer any questions people have. Can they come visit you? In Ukraine? Yeah. Come on. Come on, really? 90 days you can get in without a visa. So. 90 days. You can get in without a visa. Oh, anytime. say less than 90 days you can get in without a visa. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think anybody would. Okay. And, you know, you might have to wear a mask right now. But, okay. But the numbers are really low, so I'm just really excited. Like, okay. So, okay. I'm like, well, I, I just, was there a question? Um, Are you poor, medium, medium? It, it has a wide range. Wide range, okay. Um, the older people are, I would say, hurting. Um, just because, you know, they give them the, uh, their pension is what it was when they quit work. Well, and it doesn't account for any inflation, and so um, they're often, by the end of the month, asking for money and handouts and things like that. Um, I mean, we have the wide range. Uh, we don't have, you know, we have middle class. So there are some, like, middle class kind of things where people are making it, they're doing good, and then there are people who have a lot of money. And so I don't work with too many of those, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, you know, um, but God's good. He, he brings who he needs to bring. And so we are, um, SEND is also working with an international church where we work with uh, students from other nations. And they are there as students in Ukraine. And so we are just praying that God opens their heart to the gospel, that they can go back to their home countries and share the gospel when they go. So, and they're there learning about medicine, learning about uh, dentistry and things like that in, in Ukraine. Um, it, 
I would say it takes a lot of work now to, it takes a relationship. Uh, when I first went in 99, people were pretty eager because the wall had just fallen in 89, so they were still eager to hear. Um, people would come, if you would help hold an assembly out on the, in the street, people would come just to hear, you know, pick up a guitar and start playing. People just swarm around. That's not really so happening so much anymore. It's taking more of a relationship to, in order to share Christ. And so the one positive thing, so when I first went there, there were all these kiosks. So that means this tiny little building on the street. And um, most of them were filled with alcohol. Well, now they're filled with coffee. So different, different drug, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, that's a change I've seen. So people, I mean, they didn't really want the alcohol. And so now they have all these little coffee shops that just have popped up everywhere. And so that's, that's a good thing, I, I feel. So Well, I did my first missions experience in Alaska in 1988, and God used 22. And so, in that summer, God used that summer to call me to missions full time. Uh, I had um, I got to work with some youth and young people at as a camp counselor, and so uh, several of them came to the Lord, and I'm like, if this is what missions is about, I'm in it. You know, I want to be a part of that. And so um, I returned four years later because I didn't know where I was going. And so God challenged me to think overseas that summer. And so in 96, I went to Ukraine uh, for the first time for six weeks. And um, I spent doing summer camp in Ukraine as well. And so that camp, that summer, met a few ladies who were like, so how do you do Sunday school? We don't have Sunday school at our church, and we want to set up Sunday school. So we shared with everything, like, well, you know, basically what we're doing here at camp, we do at Sunday school. So I went back, and I taught for 11 years in a, Bible, in a seminary, uh, teaching Christian education, teaching how to set up Sunday school, small groups, camp ministries, women's ministries. So, and then God challenged me and called me to a new thing, a missions mobilization. Uh, no, not at this point. Um, to do so, well, I would just say to do so. Do you pray put any restriction on Christian ministry? That's what the question up there that you hear. Okay. Okay. Um, no. It, when I first got there in 99 and 2000, we had to get clearance from the government to do camp ministries on the street. Um, but that now is a little more loose. It depends on the, the city you're in, too. Some cities are a little tighter about that. But most of them are open because uh, they know that you're going to do, do good things for the kids. They are concerned, though. Uh, it depends how orthodox the community is because they don't want you stealing their children. <laughs> so um, that's... Uh, orthodoxy Eastern Orthodox yeah so and it, the so yeah so that's um, so evangelicals get a rap uh, so they consider you a cult if you're an evangelical and so that has its own nuances and in the earlier days uh, you were not allowed to be buried in the same cemetery. You got to be buried behind the cemetery. And so, because you were less than a person. So, thankfully, not much of that jumps out now, but it's still around. <laughs> well, when the trumpet blows, just the back of the cemetery would go, right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes. No.
No, Eastern, uh, there's a difference between G Greek Orthodoxy and Eastern Orthodoxy. Russian, okay, so basically Greek and Russian or Orthodox. Well, so Uganda is in Africa, and they're, they're also, they go to Ethiopia, Kenya, in Africa. Uh, so the stands, like uh, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, so those are part of the central, in Central Asia. Okay. And so stan means the country of, so the country of the Kazakhs, the country of the Turks, okay. or the Turkmens. And so that's what stan means. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so, and Afghanistan is the stand, is the country of the Afghans, Perfect. so. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Appreciate you very much. Excited you could come by. Isn't that good? Okay, a lot of good stuff out there, a lot of good things the church is involved in and trying to help folks do ministry around the world and that's our Russian affiliate right there. That's our Russian connection, okay? So we are concerned about all of our missionaries and events in the world, of course. And um, Father, would you bless our time together tonight? Thank you, Lord, for Jane. Pray, pray blessing upon her. Pray, God, that, that even what she presented tonight would cause uh, hearts to be stirred and... Uh, Remind us, Lord, you're doing a great big work around the world. So our hearts get heavy, Lord, at what the news shows us. And, but often, God, you're working in all of that. You're working in every bit of it. Protect those who belong to you, Lord, like I have to tell you that. You do it all the time. You did it with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You did it with Daniel. You've been doing it for ages. So we just ask you, Lord, in agreement with you and your will, that you just protect those that are... Out there on the road, Lord, they can drink any deadly thing. They can pick up serpents. They can do whatever they're at required to do, Lord, and you'll be with them. That's as they go into all the world. That's the promise. We get nervous here, Lord, because we love people that are in hard places. Just bless their work, Lord. I guess that's what we ought to be praying. You're already a protecting God, so we just ask you to bless their work. Bless Jane, Lord, and her work as she goes back. Just God, meet her need, stir people's hearts, Lord, to help her and be a partner with her in those things, God, I pray. Lord, be good. Be good to Jane. Be here tonight, Lord, be in the Word as we preach it really fast. Help us, Lord, to, to just to cover and, and to speak on the things, Lord, that you still have for us to do tonight. So we praise you. We love you. Thank you for the crowd that's come out tonight. Pray for our classrooms upstairs and kids' things all around the building. And God bless it tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to try to do 41 verses. 41 verses tonight. 41 verses. I don't even have time to go back and get my paper. John chapter 9, we're talking about these seven major miracles that John, that John uh, uh, points out. Some of those, a lot of those were not, um, were not talked about by any of the other gospel writers. So here's one of those things. Um, so we're on the fourth or fifth one here, John chapter 9. It's pretty far into to, to, to Jesus' ministry. He finds a man that's, that's blind from birth. Blind from birth. And, and I just speak to you when, just in general, as we get going tonight, often when we're talking about physical blindness, we're, we're paralleling that with spiritual blindness. Okay, so the Lord goes back and forth in His teaching about using a blind man to see as a representation of spiritual blindness, people coming to see. Does that make sense? So in this chapter, uh, there's only 12 verses here that talk about the miracle, but then there's a whole bunch more talking about the argument around the miracle. Okay? So, now Jesus passed by and he saw a man who was blind from birth. Later in the chapter, he says, uh, they say, Nobody's ever healed 
a man that was blind from birth, but this man did. So obviously here, Jesus, um, I'm looking for my clicker, yeah. Jesus is making himself known here, you know, and Jesus wasn't afraid to run in people with any kind of trouble. You know, Jesus isn't afraid of your trouble. Let me say that right now. You know what I mean? Jesus ain't worried about it. He don't know. He, he doesn't have any problem. He's a rich man and for poor people. He's a doctor for the hurting, you know. He, he's, he's everything you need for the circumstance you're in, right? He's a marriage counselor for those having marriage trouble. He, he just ought to just, whatever your need is, just say, Jesus is the perfect answer for my trouble, Right? And he can solve my issues. If I go to him and trust him, the Lord will help me in my troubles, right? He's a very present help in times of trouble, Scripture says. And his disciples ask him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And we could go into this big thing, but it's this idea in the day, the Jewish culture, if somebody was born with a birth defect, they blame that on some type of sin. That, his, that either the boy is sent, boy sinned or was 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 predestined to sin or that his parents sinned or there was some kind of sin in the family lineage and that was how they believed. So there, Jesus is there. He sees this blind man from birth. They ask him, they say, Lord, can you explain to us? Because it's a, it's a teaching we have. Can you explain to us who sinned? Who, who messed up? God, they, you know, in their mind, God was infallible. That God made everything perfect, but sin messed it up. So somebody had to sin for this person to be, to, to be born blind, right? So he's at, they're asking that question. Now here Jesus goes, man. This, this answer always has always blown my mind, you know. And it, and it works into a whole bunch of stuff that all of us have in our life or have around us that, uh, how can I say this, that we don't like. Well, let's just get there. And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Nobody sinned. This was all about Jesus showing himself, right? What's the slide we got up there? How God reveals himself, right? How does God, in this particular case, the Lord's going to reveal himself on a, on a Saturday because it's Sabbath day. He's walking around. Most people were watching cartoons. On Saturday when I grew up, that's what Saturday mornings were, cartoons. But this man was blind, so he couldn't see no crime. Jesus was walking around looking for people watching cartoons. And the big question was, who sinned? And Jesus said, nobody sinned. This was an appointed event. This was a God event. This was so God could be made known on this very day. In this very divine appointed moment, God will be made known. That man didn't sin. His parents didn't sin. Nobody sinned. Jesus was going to walk down this road that day. You know what I mean? He was going to be walking down this road and certain eyes were going to see and certain people were going to hear and there would be a certain move of God in that place and it was appointed by God for Jesus to be seen as the Son of God and John said throughout the whole thing that you might believe so, it brings into this question, why did this happen to me? Why did I have this birth defect? Why do I have this problem? Why is this thing the way it is? Why is there war? Why is there something that breaks down? Why is this way? And the answer to all of that is, so we can see God move. Denise started it really good today. I thought you started it. Hey, everybody take a breath. God's still in charge. He's still in charge. He's still in charge. And he knew. And he knew. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He was from the beginning. He's all the way to the end. Nothing surprising. He knew what today. He knew what tomorrow. He knows what the next day. You know, the only thing he didn't know was exactly the day the trumpet was going to blow. And he said he left that to the Father. But then he went on to tell us what the season would be like. So he kind of knew something. Now, grab this. Why did I walk through that? That God might be meant known. I uh, went over to pray for Kevin Snyder, and because they didn't notice the break in his pelvis, he's not been able to walk for two weeks. He thought it was a hip joint problem, but then when he went to the surgeon in Springfield, they said, oh, there's a break in your pelvis, and I can't fix that. You've got to go to a trauma unit down in Dayton. 
And, and his big question was, why? Why did we wait two weeks for them? We took x-rays in the in, in, in emergency room in Urbana. Why couldn't they see the break? And I hated to tell him, well, so God can do some work. But I did tell him, I don't know. Here's, here's the preacher's soft way of in, in people trying to comfort people, but also trying to, I don't know why God does what he does, but I do know what God's motive is. God's motive is always to draw us close to him. That's what God's motive. He's always trying to draw us close. You understand? So I don't know why we're doing what we're doing. I don't know why you couldn't walk for two weeks. I don't know why that happened that way. It really breaks my heart that it happened to somebody in our church. You know what I mean? They struggled for two weeks because somebody didn't see an x-ray right. Sent him home. Thinking about getting a bunch of guys from my house and going in there and finding that doctor and just flattening some tires. But I doubt that's how God wants us to do that, you know what I mean? So, in any event, in all those situations we don't like and are uncomfortable and are a mess and all thing, can you just chill for a minute and say, how's God going to get glory out of this? I've watched God turn stuff around. The one thing that impressed me about God in, the, in my lifetime as I've tried to serve him is how he turns stuff around, how it seems to be broken and God turns it for good, how it seems to be all wrong and God turns it for good, how it seems to be all unfair and God makes it for good. And God just keeps working. He just keeps working. And if I'll call God into it, God will come in and he'll do something good, Right? We get, we get discouraged. Often we get discouraged because of our situation. We do, you know. The number one reason why Christians don't have an on-fire walk with Jesus is something in their walk discourages them. And the answer is, what if it's for God to get glory? What is for God to do a great thing? What if it wasn't for that? It would never be fixed. It would never be what it was supposed to be. It would never be the testimony that the whole community was supposed to hear. It was never going to be a life-changing thing. It was just going to be blah until Jesus let it break and the Lord did something to flip it around in time and everybody rejoices and are thankful and are praising God because God took a bad thing and he made it good. That's the promise we have as believers that the world doesn't have. You understand that? That everything in your life is purpose for good if you'll love God and you're called according to his purpose. Right? The world doesn't have none of that. But for me, because I love God and walking in His purpose, the Bible says everything's going to work out for good. I can't see it. But what's the song? Even when I can't see that you're working. Even when I feel like I want to quit you, Lord. Even when I feel like you're far away. Even when I cried out and I cried out, Lord, and nothing changed. God, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that you're working. I, even when I can't see it, I know. Even when I don't know it, Lord, I know. God, you're working. You're working for me. You're working because I love you. You're working because I purpose for you. You're working because I love you. You're a God of good. Right? That's a major verse, man. I'm just telling you, that's, that settles a whole bunch of stuff that us Christians don't understand, right? Nobody sinned. It's not nobody's fault. Sometimes we walk through trouble. Now, there are times when it is. We're not ignoring that, you know. Every bad decision has a consequence. And if you're not putting seeds in the ground, you're never going to get fruit. Right? But if you're just striving to, to serve God, to know God, there's a purpose for what happens in your life. Man, I'm on verse 3. I got 41 to do tonight. When, uh, how can I say this to you? When I left the church to start this church, the pastor didn't like that. The pastor I was under didn't like that. And what he did pretty much right away was he did something the Bible has in it called shunning you. He shunned me. So he told the people in the congregation that we weren't doing right and nobody was to have any more conversation with us. What killed me was, this sounds crazy, what killed me was we thought God might be calling us to Peru. 
And as I went to Peru in that season where we were being shunned, I realized that the pastor got to Peru and we were shunned in everything in Peru. So places that I'd built and places that i work and friends that I had in Peru, they said, Mark, we love you, but we can't talk to you. Mark, we'd love to have you speaker in this church. You built this church, but we can't let you in the door. I'd go to the door of a church. They wouldn't let me in. And I'm going, God, what in the world? What in the world? What are you doing? Well, long story short in that whole thing was, so God pushed us into Westville. Because doors were closed in Peru. That makes sense. So we come to Westville. You know, that's how we got to Westville. When some other doors shut, God opened some doors. We're right here. This is where God wanted us to be. Some doors are closed, or we might have been... I don't know if you guys get that, but we might have been doing a whole bunch of this, right? But God shut some doors, and I'm going, God, why? It's so unfair. It's so wrong. Westfield Church got started. Renew Strength Church got started. We got shunned at the old church. You know, we never wanted those relations. But, but because the door got closed behind us, guess what? We couldn't go backwards. <laughs> so guess what? The only way to go was forward, right? And we got tears in our eyes every, every second of the day because our hearts broken because there are things that happen that we felt like were unfair. And we're questioning God, saying, God, how are you in this? What did we do wrong? The biggest story and miracle in my life. I hurt my back on that post right there. I was digging a big footer in that post. A jackhammer got stuck under that post right there. I hurt my back real bad. I go home. I get home. My wife, as soon as I get home, says, you need to mow the grass. Our, our grass looks terrible. My back is killing me because she says I need to mow the grass. Yes, dear, try to mow the grass. My, we're so broken that moment in time because we put a bunch of money in here. We're so broken that moment in time. I, my lawnmower won't start. I don't have money to buy a lawnmower battery. So I, I get on the lawnmower and jump in my old truck. Right? I go mowing a little bit. My grass is really high. My mower gets choked out on high grass. It dies. It won't restart. I got to take my old truck out, jump the mower in the yard. I mow another little bit. My, my mower gets stuck. Bogged down and dies. I got to drive my truck out there. And in, in a moment, about the fourth or fifth time I did that, I slammed my head down on the steering wheel and said, God, have I missed you? Am I doing wrong? God, what is wrong? Everything's broken. We're broken. The joke, nothing's happening. And the Lord speaks to me in an audible voice. And that's a whole different story. We don't have time for that. I got 38 more verses to go. And I had to pass a major test. God ran me through a major test. And when I passed that major test in my life, God was testing me. All of a sudden, we put a chair down in the sanctuary. Somebody sat in it. A man from across the street had a dream one time. And he said, Mark, God's with you. And every time you put a chair in your sanctuary, somebody will sit in it. In a dream, you were folding out chairs and somebody was sitting in. You were folding out chairs, somebody said. And we went through a long period of time where we grew and we grew and we grew. And we cut the floor out. We were going so much. We started five or six churches out of our church here. You know what I mean? It's just been an amazing, crazy, wild thing. God called us to leave a church. We get shunned. You wonder why things, hard things happen to you? It's so God gets glory. It's so God moves you where he wants you to move. God directs your life. God directs my path. In the morning, Lord, direct my path. You got it. God, I don't know where to go. I'm a lost fool. Lord, when I found you, I was lost. God, if I don't keep calling out to you, I'll still be lost. So God, you got to direct my path. Right? I'm running out of time on those verses. Neither this man or his parents sinned. Nobody sinned. 
but that the works of God should re be revealed in this blind man. Right? I can at least get 12 in. Let's go fast. And I must work the works of him who sent me while the, while the day. The night is coming when no one can work. Jesus was there. I got to get my work done here. So it's going to be one of these seven John miracles, you know what I mean, that you might believe. And as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. That's one of those I am's. There's seven big I am's in John 2. We don't have time to cover all that. And he said to these, he said, and spit on the ground. He spit. Jesus' answer to the problem was spitting. He spit it and made clay with his saliva. There'd be people here who say, that's gross. I'll just tell you. And he anointed the man's eyes and of the blind man with clay. Now, I get in a big theological thing with you, but man was made out of clay, right? So this is a miracle. I think this is part of this titch and this miracle. This isn't where God healed something. This is where God recreated something. He was blind from birth. He never saw. There was no healing to make. So when he made clay, he made man out of clay. You know, So he picked up some clay and he put it on that dude's eye. He made him a set of eyeballs. That, that's all I can tell you. You know, That's what that clay and stuff. He didn't heal some eyeballs because his eyeball never worked. I don't even know if he had eyeballs. So he got him some clay because that's where it all starts, you know. And he balled that thing up like a cue ball, you know. No, just like a ping pong ball maybe, okay. I don't know. But he put it on the guy's face, you know. And he said, uh, hey, we're going to do it this way, brother. I wonder if he spit twice. One for each one. one this is left. This is right. I don't know. That's the way he did it. Now you know why they think clay. He's spitting the clay. Because there wasn't a healing needed. There was a creation miracle needed. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So what did he do? This is what's amazing about some of Jesus' miracles. Some, some of these miracles require you to do something. Your faith requires you to step. You know, Jesus did his part, man. He's spitting some mud. Hey, now he's saying, go do something. Go do something. I'm going to see if, if, you, if you'll be obedient, I'll, it'll, be, it'll happen for you. But if you're not obedient, I, I'm a big believer. He doesn't go worse. If he goes down to the bathtub, if he goes to the next restroom, if he goes to, down to Chipotle's and washes it down, it, I don't know where he goes. But if he doesn't go to that pool in that place and wash that out, he wasn't obedient to God and he doesn't get those new eyeballs. You all understand that? That's why it's so important that you... Walk out whatever God. You got to walk it out. You got to, if you know what to do, if God's giving you instruction to do, you got to do it. And you got to do it all the way. Uh, can I tell you the latest story? We're over time. I'm not going to get 12 done. Latest story. Latest story was there was a gal. She's not here tonight. Uh, what's her name? Nima. Uh, what's her name? Wanima. 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 She wants to go to Peru bad. She feels like the Lord spoke to her to go to Peru. So I said, man, you got to get your passport in. She said, well, my husband, there coronavirus. I hate to tell her story when she's not here. No, I don't. Anyhow, uh, she said, my husband in coronavirus has ran off into drug using again. But I really feel like God's speaking to me going about to Peru. Really speaking to me going to Peru. And I'm struggling financially. We're raising a little girl and, and struggling. I said, hey. Let's get that passport in. We got to get that passport in. We got to get that in. You're going to run out of time. We got to get that passport in. She said, I just don't have the money. I said, I will get you the money. Expedite it. Pay a little extra. We'll get you it. So I met her after church. It looked like a drug deal. And I handed her money behind the bank up here. It looked like we were drilling. Drug. And you know what I, what I wanted to see? I wanted to see how quick she was going to move on that. By the next day, hey, in the afternoon of the next day, she's texting me pictures of the receipts where she... She did her passport, you know what I mean? I, I said in my heart, I said, Lord, she wants to go, man. She's not one of these, speak with man, 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 with my mouth. She's, she's doing some action. So as soon as she got the money, bam, she ran. She did it, you know? And I said, God, bless her faithfulness. I preached the next Sunday. That was on Wednesday night on Sunday. She came, she said, Mark, it's going to happen, isn't it? I said, it's going to happen. She said, I'm just nervous about the money. I said, oh, girl, come on, man. Come on. My father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You're going to be in the cell cow. You're going to be fine. I preach a sermon. A man walks up to me right after church. 
right after church, nothing to do with Peru whatsoever. Man walked up to me, says, "Hey, I really enjoyed the preaching today. As I was sitting there today, the Lord told me I can't. I'm I'm not well enough to go to Peru." But the Lord said, I'm supposed to pay for somebody to go to Peru. Is there anybody who needs help going to Peru? I said, whoa, stop. Wanima, come here. She walks up here. He says, can I help you go to Peru? She starts sobbing. I believe if she didn't go the next day and buy her passport, it wouldn't happen. We're out of time. Father, thanks for the minutes we had. Tried my best, Lord, to just develop whatever, Lord, you wanted me to develop tonight. We thank you, God, for your goodness. You are a miracle worker. You're the one. You're the one that says, I, you never say, I can't. You never say, I have no ability. You never say, it's too much for me. You never say that, Lord. And so many things in our Christian walk, Lord, because you purposed us for good, because you want to make beauty out of ashes. So many things in our Christian walk, Lord, are broken so you get glory. They're broken so we see you. They're broken to cause us to move. They're broken to cause us, God, to look up. Huh. And you direct our path. And you work everything out for good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray for Jane again, Lord. <laughs> go before her. She was faithful tonight in being here and just presenting. God, just go before her. Go before her, Lord. Meet her need. And for every person, Lord, that doubts you in any way, let them hear the word of God tonight that says, that was created for God's glory. That, I didn't just preach this random, Lord. That was, tonight was a set-apart night so somebody would hear that all happened for God's glory. And let them believe that tonight, Lord. John wrote these things that we might believe. Let them believe, I pray. Thank you for time together. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. Love you, love you. Come back again, would you? Someday we'll get through a whole story, right? Oh, hey, this is Zoe. She's going off to Ohio University right there, right? So if you want to pray for Zoe, we'll pray for Zoe. This is her last night here. She's running off to school, okay? So thank you for coming. We love you.